Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printed here. In today's video, I want to talk about how to add permissions to your endpoints in your Django REST framework app. So adding permissions to your endpoints allows you to restrict what can be done on particular endpoints. So for example, if I say something like, you know, paradigms, I can restrict this to being read only or I can restrict it to being visible to people who have logged in. So I'll show you how to do that in this video. But the first thing I want to tell you is I have a new free course available on my website. It's called Django Database Essentials. So you can go to prettyprinted.com to get this. And it's 23 videos over about two hours and it takes you through everything you need to know about how to use the model system in Django. So if you weren't sure about how to do some things in Django, this course should be able to help you and it's free. So just check it out on my website. There's gonna be a link in the description below to it as well if you want to get a direct link. So back to the permissions. So with Django REST framework, there are basically two sides to this. There is authentication and permissions. I'm not gonna cover authentication in this video because it's a little more complicated. So in a future video, I'll cover authentication. So we'll use the basic authentication for now. But basically, once someone is logged in, once they have authenticated themselves, they said who they are, then you can put per certain permissions on these endpoints to prevent people or allow people to do certain actions. So right now, there are no permissions or anything like that, so I can easily add new paradigms here. I can edit them and so on. But if I wanted to modify this so a user has to be logged in to edit, and if they weren't logged in, then they can only read, then I can do that with permissions. So to do that, I'm going to show you exactly how. So the first thing you need to do, at least when you're using basic authentication, like I said, I'm not going to cover the details of authentication in this video. So I'll just use the basic authentication, which basically means it's like logging into a site. So to do this, I need to supply some URLs that take care of this functionality that allows you to actually log in. So just look at my app running right now and notice there is nothing over here in the top right corner. And when I add this, that's going to change. So what I need to do is I need to set some kind of endpoint for API authentication. So API-auth is a good enough one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to include the URLs from REST framework. So if I do REST, underscore framework dot urls and save this that's all i need to do to have a login enabled so now you see in the top right hand corner i have this login button if i click it it has a very simple login form that allows me to enter a user and a password and i have a super user created already for this app so i will just use my super username so before i actually log in let me talk about the permissions so the permissions will prevent certain actions from happening on particular views or objects or whatever you want to call them, models. And if I go to my code here and go to my views, we see that I have three views. So the language view, the paradigm view, and the programmer view. So let's say, for example, I didn't want users to be able to edit languages. So right now I can go to languages and I see I can view all of the languages in the database, and I can also add a new one. And I can click on a specific one and edit it. But let's say I didn't want that available. Let's say I only wanted logged in users to be able to edit these or add to them. Well, it's actually pretty simple to do with Django REST Framework. I'm going to import something else from REST Framework up here. So I'm also going to import permissions. And then when I get to the view that I'm interested in, it's going to be in a very similar style to this. So I just specify permission classes. So permission underscore classes. And then this equal is going to be the permission that is run. So the permission is basically a tuple of permissions. So this permissions that I imported from REST framework is going to have all of them. So permissions dot, and then what follows is the actual permission, <clears throat> the actual permission that I'm interested in. So in this case, like I said, I only want logged in users to be able to edit or add. So to do that, I'll put is authenticated or read only. And I think the O is capital. Okay, so I have that permission. And like I said, it's a tuple, so I need the comma at the end. And with that, I've restricted language view to being read only unless someone is authenticated. So basically, the description of the permissions is also the name. So if I go back here and refresh languages, 
I still see the list of languages, but that form that I had down here to add a new one is gone. And if I click on the individual instance, I can no longer see that form to edit. So let me just comment this out and then refresh so you can see the visual change. So it's commented out, refresh, and we see the form here again. And then if I uncomment it and refresh, the form is gone. So the way for me to get this form back is to actually be authenticated. So I'll log in. And then when I return here, I see the form again and we see my username up there. So it just allows me to log in and log out. And when I'm logged in, that means I am authenticated. So I can edit a language and I can add a language. Where's the list? Oh, here we go. I can add a language down here. So that's pretty straightforward. And it's only active on this language list. If I go to programmers, well, if I log out first and go to programmers, I have the ability to add more programmers and I have the ability to add more paradigms because I didn't put the permission check on those two. I only put it on languages and you can see I don't have that form available anymore. Now, if I were doing this through something like Postman, then of course you wouldn't see a form, but if you try to submit the data without properly authenticating yourself first, like you're trying to create a new language, then it would just return an error telling you that you don't have permission to do that and you need to log in first before you do that. But since that's more of an authentication thing with Postman because you have to actually log in, I'll show you that in the authentication video. But for now, the basic authentication with this login link up here is good enough. So I can put the permissions on individual views or I can also put them in the settings. So if I go to the settings for the entire app, I want to create settings for the REST framework. So I don't have any here. So basically I need to create settings and it's going to be all capitals for REST framework. And then inside of here, I'm going to basically create a key called default permission underscore classes. And then it's going to be similar to what I have. So instead of having it in one view, like I have here, it's going to be set globally. So if I just copy this entire tuple and paste it here, this is basically saying that all the views in my app will have this permission active. So if I refresh this and I look at programmers now, my app didn't crash on me and it did and name permissions isn't defined because I should specify this a little more directly. So I can say rest underscore framework dot permissions uh, to be a little more direct. And this is going to be a string by the way. So yeah, that's where it was. So basically by making this a string, it's going to be read and parsed. So there we go. It's still a tuple, but the part inside is a string and uh, you need rest framework before it. So one minor mistake. So now let me try running that again. And let's go back to programmers. Okay. So we see with programmers, I can no longer see the form. And if I go to paradigms, I can no longer see the form here. That is because I have this global permission here. If I did something like allow any, that is basically the default. That means anyone can do anything. If I have is authenticated, then you can't see anything at all. And then for every single thing in my API, you won't be able to see anything until you log in. So if I log in with my username and password again, now I can see the list of endpoints that are available in my API. So basically is authenticated, is authenticated or read only, allow any, and there's also is admin, those are pretty common. Of course it can get more complicated depending on your particular use case because you can do something like object level permissions. So certain users can only modify certain data in a table. So instead of the entire table being available to be edited or read only, 
the user can only read and edit a specific row in the table. So that's probably something I'll cover in the future, but it's a little more complicated than this, so I'll skip it for this video. But as you can see, adding permissions on your views is very simple. You can either do it globally or one by one, depending on your needs. So I hope this video helped you understand how permissions work in Django REST framework. Like I said, I'll cover authentication in the future because that's the other half. And with authentication, you don't necessarily need to use a basic login like this. You can use something called session authentication. You can use token-based authentication, web, JSON web token authentication, and so on. And I'll demonstrate some of those so you can get a more complete picture of how it works because no real API, for the most part, is going to be used through the browser. This is just for demonstration purposes. So the other forms of authentication become really important, and I'll cover those in a future video. So that's it for this video. If you like it, please give me a thumbs up. Like I said, if you want to check out my free course, go to prettyprinter.com and you can see it there on the front page or you can just click on the link in the description below. If you have any questions about this, you can leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.